Hello guys, Chris P here, welcome back to another Sunday video. In this one, my friends, we're going to be testing the 12-year-old AMD FX 8350 in 2024. <laughs> So, the FX8350 released back in 2012, and it's an 8-core CPU, but with a different configuration compared to what we have today. It has 4 modules and 2 cores in each module, and this led to some controversy around the FX series of CPUs, and some people actually believe that this is a quad-core CPU. In reality, it does have 8 cores, but even in Windows Task Manager, it says that it's a quad-core with 8 logical threads. Interesting. <laughs> the 8350 over here consumes 125 watts at stock speeds, and even with its 8 cores, it only manages to match the multi-core performance of an i5 4th generation, guys. That's a quad-core with 4 threads, okay? Now, granted, the FX released before the 4th generation of Intel CPUs, but even when it released, it was very lackluster in single-core performance. And not only that, AMD only had this to compete with Intel all of those years up until 2017 when Ryzen launched. Actually, AMD almost went bankrupt, can you believe that, because they couldn't compete with Intel with the FX series CPUs. Thankfully though, Ryzen completely turned the tables and now AMD is very competitive, providing some of the best processors out there. But had they failed with Ryzen, we would probably still have quad-core i7s in 2024. Yep. <laughs> but how does the FX 8350 perform in today's popular titles? Well, that's what we're gonna find out. First, let's go over the PC configuration. I am running the 8350 overclocked to 4.4 GHz on this ASUS M5A97 motherboard, and I'm also pairing it with 32GB of DDR3 clocked at 1866MHz and an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4080 Super to make the CPU the bottleneck in every game tested, and also to test some frame generation a little bit. Finally, let's play some games on the FX 8350. Shall we? Let's start with Counter-Strike 2. And by the way, the CPU frequency is down there because I am using hardware info for that. MSI Afterburner wasn't reading the CPU frequency or the CPU power utilization, unfortunately. So there's that. Let's go over the settings first. I'm starting at 1080p resolution using the low settings with FSR disabled right here and four times MSAA to make it a little bit crispier. Just how I like it. Let's go. <laughs> All right, let's start counting our FPS. Oh my God, it's a stuck. Such a mess, guys. Look at that frame time graph. Oh boy. That's because this game heavily relies in single core performance. It's not really utilizing all of the cores and threads on our CPU. It's at around like 50 to 60% usage there after all. But yeah, in terms of single core performance, the FX absolutely sucks. Even when overclocked and even if you put it at like 5 gigahertz with a super extreme motherboard and cooling solution or whatever, it's gonna suck, guys. The FX is terrible. Okay, as you can see right here. It is playable though, so at least there's that. I'm playing the game, I'm killing people, I got 9 kills already. But I do think that if you want to play this game in 2024, you need an upgrade, guys. Actually, you probably need an upgrade to play any of the games that we're about to play here today. <laughs> Given that CS2 is one of the easier ones to run. Now, the, the quick performance, I guess, is kind of expected since the CPU is so old. If this was CS2, go, it would have been a much better experience, of course, but hey, now we got CS2 instead, and the FX struggles like crazy. That said, guys, look at who's first place at the moment. It's a me, Mario. No, it's, it's El Crispo, yes. Not without any struggles, you know, because it's a very stuttery experience, and the 1% lows suggest that, but I, I can play the game. And I could enjoy it a little bit if, if I wasn't too mad about the freaking stuttering issues <laughs> and how much worse of a player it makes me. <laughs> but hey, it is what it is. I, I, you can play the game. I, I don't recommend it, though. <laughs> oh my god, look at that. <laughs> 40s of the FPS sometimes. Next up, we got Helldivers 2. And over here, it's getting 69 FPS. Very nice indeed. And this is a very CPU demanding game as well, especially down there. So I'm not expecting great things. <laughs> Just moving the camera around right here makes it stutter like crazy. Look at that. Damn. Oh boy, wait a second. It's getting 100 FPS. Well, sometimes uh, looking down at the map, that's, that's actually amazing. Okay. All right. Look at that. 
it is not terrible. It, it still manages to be smooth, even though... Oh my god! I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die very fast here. Uh, and I'm alone as well. <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, even though the CPU is definitely maxed out here, this game can utilize all of our eight threads. Oh my gosh! All right, let's go up here. Let's go. Come on. Faster, faster, faster. Hopefully he can't really come here. Where is he? Where is he? There he is. Huge! Bastard right there. Let's throw some grenades. Oh boy. Heal, heal, heal. No. Oh, this is going to be terrible. <laughs> it's actually handling it okay, guys. Given how old it is, I thought it was going to do a worse job here in Helldivers 2. It's a recent title. Also, guys, about the temperatures of the FX 8350 there. It's reporting 27 degrees Celsius, and that's extremely weird. I don't know why they're so low. They're probably not that low. I do have a huge AIO on top of it, though, uh, cooling it. It's a 360 millimeter. It's running, running at full speed. Oh, boy. But those temperatures still look pretty damn low. <laughs> Even though the cooling is more than adequate. Anyways, let's go. All right, you know what, guys? This can be an enjoyable experience. I'm going to try to lock the FPS. Hopefully, well, I am going to die. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to turn this on, set it to 30 right there. Apply. And with the 30 FPS lock, you can see that it makes the frame time graph be a little bit smoother. It lowers the CPU utilization by a little bit as well. So we're not stressing our FX process to the maximum anymore which is nice since it's going to become a little bit more playable this way oh my god or a little bit smoother but you know what it was still fine even with unlocked fps so just pick your poison i guess this one is playable though <laughs> next up is the good old gta 5 and we're playing this one at 1080p resolution with four times msaa using the very high to ultra settings here because well the fx should be able to handle it this is after all an older title and will you look at that my friends almost a hundred frames per second with the fx 8350 that's great to see let's start counting our fps and as you can see even driving through the city at uh, almost full speed of this car we're still getting a respectable 70 to 80 frames per second most of the time that's very good to see especially because i was thinking that it would get us like 50 to 60 fps most of the time because that's what i got when i played this game for the first time on the fx 6350 and gtx 760 um but no this is definitely a little bit faster than that six core three module cpu from AMD at the time. Also, the CPU utilization is far from being maxed out. It's at around 60 to 70 percent most of the time, and that's because this game, well, it's an older title. It came out in an era where quad cores were the norm, quad cores with four threads were more than enough to play everything. Actually, my most viewed video in the channel is a test in GTA 5 testing a dual core i3 versus a quad core i5 and a quad core eight threaded i7 in GTA 5 and there was basically no difference between the i5 and i7. So, uh, well, that, that's to say that this game doesn't really use a ton of threads, okay? Over here in Jack's Hill, we usually see it drop a lot in FPS, but that's because we are usually GPU bound, and this is very, very GPU intensive. With a 4080 Super and an FX, of course, we are still CPU bound, so we're getting around the same FPS. Hello, Jack. How's it going, my friend? It's a beautiful day over here. <laughs> I love it. Uh, thank you for, for watching the FX video. Jack. Around here, 70s, 60s. It actually does drop a little bit, but it's not dropping too much from 60s. 57 right there. Bob, Bob. There we go. Yeah, go back to hell or something. And well, guys, that's it for GTA 5. If you have an FX processor, it should run absolutely fine, especially with an overclock. If you don't overclock it, expect like 10% lower FPS. We would probably see it dip down into the 50s around here, driving fast through the city, you know. Um, but yeah, with the OC, which is very easy to do in these chips, it can actually hold 60 plus most of the time with a couple of drops here and there. Time to kill Cyber Bob in Cyberbug 2077. Uh, punk, Cyberpunk, yes. So we're playing this one at 1080p resolution using the high settings preset. I set the crowd density to low though because, well, it's a CPU intensive setting, you know, and I disabled these settings right here just because I don't like the look of them. Let's go. And here we have it. This is not too bad. We're getting 
1940s and 50s, it kind of reminds me of an APU, like the Radeon 680M on the Ryzen 7 6800H, for example, that I tested in this uh, channel. Uh, but the thing is, it's an FX CPU, so it's way slower than that CPU inside of the 6800H, and over here it's actually dropping quite a lot, although it's keeping 30 plus FPS all of the time, my god, what a stutter, dude! <laughs> Goodbye, Bob, by the way! That was absolutely terrible! Also, look at the CPU utilization going up to 99%, 100% usage! Holy! This roundabout is one of the most intensive areas, especially for the CPU to render in this game game and in my benchmark run as well so it's no surprise that the FX is struggling quite a lot um, back when the game released you could actually get by playing cyberpunk on an FX CPU it would work much better than this but now the game has become a little bit more CPU intensive and this is what we get it could be playable for some people I can see some people enjoying the game like this it but yeah, with those slowdowns, I wouldn't really recommend this, you know? But here's the thing, guys. We might be able to save it with frame generation right here. This is known to remove CPU bottlenecks or at least make them much, much better, okay? And over here, I haven't really tried it, but look at our FPS right now, and it's smooth! And it's way more responsive! Now, this area isn't really that intensive, of course. We will need to see near Bob's roundabout if it drops. Oh, the frame time graph is going crazy. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, the smoothness is there, but the input lag right now is kind of insane, especially when the frame time goes crazy. You go, bye, Bob, once again. Okay, he, did, he didn't die. Come on, come on. I think he's dead now. Yeah, pretty sure, right? Oh, yeah. When the frame time becomes a wall instead of a graph, basically, <laughs> uh, it doesn't feel good, even with frame generation. But it's very impressive that it's keeping 60 plus FPS, though. Like, the frame generation stuff is very, very interesting and uh, nice technology, in my opinion. Maybe if I lock the FPS, I'm going to try to lock it to 60. With 60 locked, we basically get the same input lag as 30 FPS, all right? But with the smoothness of 60 FPS and... Uh, a flatter frame time graph and right now look at that CPU usage isn't maxed out all of the time anymore we're getting 60 FPS the smoothness of 60 but it feels really really bad when turning the mouse around like this guys I really don't recommend it <laughs> oh boy I mean just driving around is fine but as soon as you start moving your mouse there is quite a lot of input lag. Over here still goes to 99% uh, CPU utilization, of course, and it stutters like crazy. And it might even drop sometimes, as you can see right there, so... Yeah, FG, although very impressive, it can't save this chip. <laughs> Back to an easy game to run. This is Valorant at 1080p using the low settings with high textures, 4 times MSAA and 8 times anisotropic filtering. And let's start counting our FPS. Here we go, guys. It is playable, apparently. Oh, there we go. Okay, it's been a really long time since I've played Valorant. <laughs> and I kind of suck at it, not gonna lie. <laughs> okay. Oi, hello, Viper. Goodbye. All right, there we go. There we go go okay it's all good it's all good not a headshot there okay yeah maybe my cs skills will show up right here and save us it's also way smoother than cs2 was by the way uh, as expected as well oh my god that's a good shot okay oh, yeah, 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 yeah. thank you sage for not killing me <laughs> she missed all of the shots as i usually do <laughs> You know what? The stuttering issues are kind of gone at this point. They were here at the beginning of the game, right? Probably loading in the map and so on. But now this is a smooth experience, a smooth frame time graph as well. Damn it! <laughs> it doesn't make me a good player, you know, but it, it works. What's funny is that GPU utilization, guys. <laughs> it's at like 7% single digits GPU usage <laughs> with the FX in Valorant. To be expected, once again, this game is very light on the GPU. It's kind of like the ultimate bottleneck, right? Uh, a CPU from 2012 coupled with a high-end GPU from 2024. <laughs> it's insane. Oh boy. Only in this channel, my friends. <laughs> oh, look at that. 69 1% lows. Perfect. Perfect experience in Valorant. This is the perfect CPU for this game, apparently. <laughs>
And now we have the beautiful Horizon Forbidden West. We're playing at 1080p using the LAA and the very low graphics settings with very high textures because, well, we can with this GPU, of course. Now, we're getting around 30-ish frames per second right here, which is pretty impressive for a little FX processor, but it does dip here and there into the 20s, as you can see. And unfortunately, even if you enable like FSR or DLSS or the dynamic resolution scaling of the game, it won't really improve those drops into the 20s. It will still drop into the 20s because it's a CPU bound scenario. But what about frame generation, guys? Let's enable that and see if it helps it in this game as well. And oh boy, does it help. Look at that. <laughs> now, the good thing about frame generation in Horizon Forbidden West is that it doesn't introduce a ton of input lag like it does in other titles, like Cyberpunk was really, really noticeable. Here, it's fine. You can definitely tell that it's not like native 40, 50 frames per second, but it doesn't feel too unresponsive, okay? Unfortunately, though, since it's below 60 FPS and since the frame time graph is still all over the place, it, it results in a stuttery experience anyways. Now, it's pretty sad to see this. I expected it to perform a little bit better than it does. And right here, it's actually okay with frame generation, reaching 80 frames per second at times. But I have tested this game in its minimum requirements, which ask for a Ryzen 3 1200 or 1300X. Yeah, it's the 1300X. That's a quad core. Oh my God, massive stutter. Holy crap. No, stop it. That's insane. Oh my God. But yeah, the minimum requirements CPU is a quad core with four threads. So I was hoping the eight threads on the FX processor would help it a little bit here and maybe deliver a better experience than the 1300X. But that's not really the case. Although around this area for for example, since we don't have many NPCs on screen and so on, it's okay. It's getting like 90-ish FPS with the frame generation. So without frame generation, it would be about half of what we're seeing right here. Uh, and speaking of, yeah, I'm gonna disable that as well because most people won't have frame generation <laughs> with a CPU like this, of course. Um, and yeah, uh, there we go. It's, it's about half of what we were seeing in the 40s, down into the 30s at times. So it's a yet another case of the FX being too slow and too old of a processor for this to be expected, honestly. Uh, so I'm not really sad or anything, uh, but yeah, it, 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 it has no surprises here. And well, it's that time of the video again, stutter night. <laughs> and I think it will be very stuttery with the FX, <laughs> but we're playing at 1080p resolution performance mode using these settings right here. Oh my god! Okay, so... First things first, guys, I've actually spent like 20, 30 minutes spectating a match. I died like five minutes in, uh, so it could load everything, you know, the shaders and so on. And I did install the streaming assets or streamed assets, whatever, uh, in the Epic Games launcher, okay, for this game. So <laughs> I hope it, it only stutters like this over here, but I'm not sure, guys. So how many people are dropping here with us? One, two, three, four, maybe. Eh, okay, maybe a, a couple of more. Oh, God, I'm clipping through walls and stuff. Holy crap. I'm going to start counting our FPS. Eight FPS, 1% lows already. Absolutely amazing, right? The average FPS are actually really, really good at 140 plus. The problem is those 1% lows... It is completely unplayable because of the amount of stuttering in this particular title. It's it's absolutely insane. Now, granted, yes, this is a 12-year-old CPU at this point. It's very old. Um, it's actually fantastic that it's able to, to do this well of a job with 100 plus FPS on average, you know, but... If it wasn't for the stutters, it, it would be amazing. Now, I just rage quit it because I can't really play with all of that stuttering. I'm going to try playing with DirectX 12 because DX12 is usually way more stable, at least in my experience. All right, here we have it after a fresh restart. 1080p DX12 using the low settings with 100% resolution scale. All right, what? No way. Okay. Oh, oh boy. Oh, so... The circle. The circle is actually coming, guys, and I just got off the buzz. So uh, it's safe to assume that um, DX12 won't help things. <laughs> Look at this. Holy crap, dude. Oh my goodness, this is terrible. There's a guy over there. There's a guy. Wait a second. Can we do this? Can we do this? I also stopped counting the FPS, by the way. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. 
Come on, give me the kill, bro. Give me that kill. Yes, we did it. <laughs> Cannot believe that worked. I am 2 HP, but we did it. <laughs> Well guys, Alan Wake 2 is next and this is the experience that you can expect on an FX processor. It says running right there and now we're back to launch. So it just, it doesn't even launch. Yeah, the FX looks at the game and says, nope. <laughs> Okay, now we're testing Dota 2, which should run okay on the FX processor, right? We're at 1080p using high settings, 100% resolution scale, and I'm watching a match right now. A huge team fight is about to happen. I'm going to start counting our FPS. And as you can see, with all of these effects on screen, the FX <laughs> isn't really struggling, is it? It's handling it all right. Yes, it drops from 60 FPS sometimes, and that frame time graph isn't amazing. But I mean... This is more than I can ask for with an FX processor. Dota 2 is an older title as well. It's released back in 2013, so it's not really that intensive. The FX was a solid CPU back when this game released. Also, CPU utilization when nothing is happening basically is at around 50%. I didn't really see how much it climbed during the team fight, but I guess it's about to happen again, so we'll see. Oi, finally something happening. There we go. 40 something FPS. Dropping quite a bit more this time around than in the previous fight and uh, CPU usage is still at around 50%. I wonder if it just can't utilize the uh, extra modules or whatever cores, weird stuff, architecturally speaking, that AMD has put inside of this FX processor. Uh, yeah, that, that might be what's happening here. Or maybe the game just doesn't utilize more than like four cores efficiently. Either way, guys, this is an overall smooth experience, even with that weird frame time graph. And I could definitely have a lot of fun playing Dota 2 with an FX processor, even in 2024. Hogwarts Legacy is up next. We're playing at 1080p, TAA is on high, and we're using the low settings. What? How is the FX getting 60 FPS in Hogsmeade? This is one of the most intensive areas in the game for a CPU to render, and it's actually playable on an FX8350. I am beyond surprised at the moment, guys. Holy crap. There's no frame generation included here right now. It's turned off, okay? So <laughs> it is actually producing real 40-ish frames per second. It's not smooth 40-ish frames per second, but even on my high-end system, it stutters a little bit around Hogsmeade. You know, it's just something that this game does badly. <laughs> it's not very well optimized in this area for the CPU or in the Hogwarts Palace or school or castle, whatever. But yeah, this is totally unexpected, guys. I, I didn't think it would be capable of achieving 60 FPS sometimes. Yeah, look at that. It's starting to stutter quite a bit as well. Around here, usually by this area, it's actually really smooth with no frame time issues because it's not as CPU intensive. But here we are fully CPU bound all of the time, of course, with the FX. Um, at least with the 4080 Super. Maybe if you paired it with something like a GTX 10 60, which isn't that unrealistic of a pairing, I think, it would get you full GP utilization, actually. That's pretty insane to see. This game is pretty well optimized, apparently, to take advantage of old core architectures. It's not great, and the experience is a little bit rough sometimes, but we are also flying around. If you are on the ground, just walking around, um, it will be a little bit smoother because it doesn't need to be rendering in things very, very fast as it is right now. Still, these were completely unexpected results, in my opinion. It's the first time that this is uh, surprising me positively today. All right, good stuff, good stuff. Now we're playing Red Dead Redemption 2 at 1080p resolution using the favor quality settings here. I just pushed the slider all the way to the right and that's it. So it's mostly ultra settings, but some things could go higher. And as you can see right here, it's getting 60 FPS, my friends. Oh yes, finally a smooth experience in a game that looks really, really good, right? You can see the CPU utilization is around 80%, sometimes more than that actually, touching like 
and at times there you go uh, yeah it's efficiently utilizing all of the available threads in the CPU now the question is where is Jack though because he's usually around here but not really <laughs> maybe I saved the game or something because I can't really find him like he used to be here trying to eat someone and now he's gone and we're arriving here strawberry town dropping down into the 40s probably even 30s yep it's quite choppy at the moment but it doesn't drop from 30 fps so all is good my friends i think this is a pretty good experience for an fx cpu actually I was expecting it to be a little bit worse than this, given how the i5-2500K did in this particular title. Okay, so now we're in the big city, Saint Denis, getting roughly the same FPS as in Strawberry. Actually, it dropped a little bit further in Strawberry. This is nice, guys. <laughs> I could play the game all day long on an FX processor. That's great to see, and obviously that's because this game also released on the PS4, which has a very similar CPU to this one inside of it. Actually, a slower one <laughs> but with console optimizations what what just happened somebody turned off the lights what <laughs> oh no come on fx you were doing so well come on fx you can do it you can do it it was right here when that happened but uh yeah it, it didn't happen again so it was probably a one-off but you know what i remembered that with some dual core processors in gta 5 the map would also disappear <laughs> <laughs> and uh, locking the FPS would solve that. So if you're seeing some weirdness with the graphics here in Red Dead Redemption 2 and an FX processor, just lock the FPS to like 40. But yeah, this time it didn't happen and it actually is getting 60 plus FPS in this area. <laughs> Very impressive, 70s even. It's time to slow down, my friends, with slow field. 1080p using the low settings. I'm gonna disable FSR right now, so it's native resolution. It's getting 30 FPS which is impressive for the age of the CPU, but it is a little bit stuttery, and as you can see, sometimes it will drop down into the 20s, which is terrible. It's, it's not what you want, of course. Now, considering Slowfield is the beast that it is to run, the, the FX isn't doing terribly, because it's 12 years old, you know, and it can achieve like 30 FPS on average. But I, I would never, ever buy Starfield to play on an FX CPU. Oh, V-Sync was turned on, but it didn't really do anything because we were far from getting 60 FPS, as you can see. Now, I will utilize some DLAA and frame generation on top, and this might actually save the little FX. Where did the FPS go? What? All right, now it's working. Let's start counting our FPS, and okay. You know what? It's... It's pretty terrible when it comes to input lag in this game with frame generation enabled, but I can respect the FPS that we're getting and the frame time graph not being too stuttery. This this actually changes the experience by quite a bit, as you can see. Anyway, remember, we're getting the input lag of about half of the performance that we're getting, so around 30 frames per second, um, but with the smoothness of 50 to 60 frames per second, which isn't too bad. Honestly, I, I thought it would be worse here in, in Starfield and it would stutter a lot more with frame generation enabled. Right now it is definitely kind of like I was expecting it to be. <laughs> Look at that frame time. But I guess it's a little bit better of an experience than I was expecting. Still not what I'd call playable or very enjoyable even. Uh, so... Yeah, <laughs> I guess it's not too bad for a 12 year old CPU, but an i7 from the time would do much better. Now it's Apex Legends, we're playing this at 1080p using the low settings with ultra textures and an isotropic at 16 times. That doesn't affect CPU performance. Okay, I'm liking this and up in the sky looking at the entire map, it's still above 60 FPS. Hmm. Are we in for a smooth experience? <laughs> All right, let's start counting our FPS and holy crap, it seems like it's going to be a high refresh rate experience. The first high refresh rate experience of the video, I think. Maybe not actually, Valorant <laughs> also got a high refresh rate experience, but this is phenomenal. You know what, guys? The last time that I played Apex Legends, it wasn't this smooth. It was when I tested the RX 6800 in this game, and maybe because of 
the ultra settings, maybe because of the AMD drivers, I don't know. It was actually a little bit stuttery sometimes, and here I've only seen like a single stutter so far, which is kind of insane. <laughs> I saw some people around here, so I'm just gonna throw my ultimate out to see if it drops the, the CPU performance or something, like the FPS, I guess. Uh, boy, oh boy, okay, it's all good, it's all good. They're also throwing out their ultimates. <laughs> Interesting, look at this. It doesn't really affect CPU performance whenever the explosions and so on are going on. So, yeah, it's fair to say it's going to be a 100 plus FPS experience all of the time on an FX 8350. That was a fast death. Okay. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> okay, so this is Call of Duty Warzone. And no, it, it isn't a still image, guys. Okay. It... <laughs> Oh my god. It actually says shader warning. Please finish preloading your shaders. But I have waited 15 minutes and it didn't finish preloading the shader. It was stuck at 6% and then it disappeared there. And uh, this is what we get. Um, what's going on? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is the most terrible experience so far in Warzone. I, I, I didn't expect it to be so bad. Well, if I can, I will restart the shader compilation thingy. But as you can see, it just disappeared from there. And I have tried this many times already. It doesn't do anything. I hate this. <laughs> You know what? I don't care. Let's move on. Next up, we have the beautifully optimized Forza Horizon 5, guys. And we're playing this one at 1080p resolution using 4 times MSAA and the medium settings preset. And look at those FPS, guys. 90 to 100 frames per second most of the time, at least right here. This isn't really a very intensive area, you know? Like, we're going to the city, which is much more CPU intensive. But it's doing a fine job. It's also almost maxing out our FX processor at 90-ish percent usage most of the time. But it doesn't really stutter, as you can see. It's a smooth experience and a more than enjoyable one. Now, around this area, it usually drops a little bit. We got more things going on on screen. 70s. Oh, my God. Okay. Okay, let's jump, both of us. <laughs> All right, that's the first time it happened. <laughs> All right, finally in the city area, it's not dropping too much. Interesting. I really thought it would drop to like 60-ish FPS. Oh my god, I was looking at the FPS there. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's it's hanging in there. Absolutely fine. The FX can play Forza Horizon 5 smoothly. Now, getting out of the tunnel is actually the most intensive thing that you can do in this game. It drops to like 76 there because we're not GPU bound. So you can expect 60 plus 100% of the time with a few frame time spikes here and there like those but it's not the end of the world. It's, it's actually a really, really good experience on the FX processor. Kind of unexpected, right? Now I'm testing The Last of Us Part 1 at 1080p using the low graphics preset here. And you can see that the CPU utilization is at 100% and there is a frick ton of stuttering here, guys. Look at that frame time graph. It is pretty unplayable at this point, I think, unless you love stuttering, like the developers of new titles. Like, I, I think they love stuttering because they include it in every single game now. No, but seriously, FPS on average are pretty impressive, but the amount of stuttering is just insane. So look at this. Look at turning the mouse around feels so bad in this title with the FX 8350. It's insane. Now I've also waited for the shaders to load everything and compile everything, you know, and that took about half an hour. <laughs> A really really long time with the FX. Also, it's interesting to take a look at this game because it released first on PS3. It had a much slower CPU than the FX. Then it came out on PS4, which had a similar CPU to this, although uh, very very underclocked compared to the FX. And then it came out on the PS5 as well. And this right here is the remake version, so much more intensive than the PS3, of course. <laughs> now this is surprising. Spider-Man Remastered is right around 69% usage on the CPU and we're playing at 1080p using the LAA and the low settings, actually the very low settings preset with high textures right here. And as you can see, it, it actually is running quite well. <laughs> 
All right, maybe because this is yet another title that came out on PS4, so it was made with these processors in mind. Even here in the middle of the city with a lot of NPCs running around doing their things, it is dropping into the 40s. Yeah, it's slowing down a little bit, but it's quite impressive what it's able to do. Now, of course, something like an i7 from the time with an overclock as well, it would get like 60, 70 frames per second most of the time, but I am impressed with the FX. It's stuttering a little bit as well, but I don't mind it, honestly. This is a playable experience. And if you lock it to like 45 frames per second, for example, it shouldn't drop from it and it should remove the stuttering issues that we're seeing. Now, around this area, it usually drops a lot when you're GPU bound, but apparently for a CPU, it's kind of the same thing. 50 plus FPS all of the time. So again, if you paired it with something like a GTX 1060, it would be capable of achieving a good experience in Spider-Man Remasters. And my friends, it is conclusion time. I'll still have a few benchmarks running right here on screen while we talk about the FX 8350's performance, which is terrible. <laughs> I mean, it's to be expected. It's a 2012 CPU. It wasn't that great back when it came out. I mean, it was okay, you know. It competed with the second generation and third generation i5s from Intel. Uh, it had slower and weaker single core performance than like even the i3s honestly but multi-core performance was slightly faster than an i5 still nowhere near the i7s though unfortunately um, unless you overclocked it and speaking of overclocking these are very good overclockers and a lot of people overclocked them back in the day but it still struggled quite a bit and when you all see these things they consume a heck of a lot of power so if you're running one of these in 2024 you should definitely upgrade Grab yourself something that's more efficient than this because there are plenty of CPUs to choose from these days that are very, very competitive. Anyways, the FX series is best left in the past for sure. And even AMD probably doesn't want to talk about it. <laughs> But hey, that's not to say that it performed terribly in all games. At least a few of them were playable and like Apex Legends was a very welcome surprise. 100 plus FPS on this thing, that's kind of insane actually. But in a lot of other titles, it just struggles way too much. It has too much stuttering and that's due to its very weak single core performance, of course. And that's been it for this video. Don't buy an FX CPU in 2024. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll catch you in the next one. Love you all. Bye-bye.